स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया in this uh, video we are going to talk about uh, riemann problem okay so in the last video so this is a continuation of our study of conservation laws and in the last video uh, we looked at a problem right that uh, if you remember ut plus u ux is equals to 0 that's the problem given to us and u at let's say x0 is given to be 1 for x positive and 0 for x negative okay or the other way around also we did right so that's not the point the point is this see uh, i mean we want to kind of generalize this uh, problem okay and what we need to do for that is uh, first of all let, let us write down the proper riemann problem so this is from the earlier class huh? earlier class or earlier video whatever you want to call it so we st- so we consider this problem so consider so the riemann problem is for a general problem right ut plus f of u clear with respect to x that is going to be 0 for t greater than equal 0 and x in r okay and we also assume u at the point x 0 is going to be some phi of x clear now what is phi of x and all that we will uh, just write it down so here phi of x is a a uh, very special function okay so this problem is called a riemann problem okay so let let me write it down number uh, this is 1 okay 1 and uh, so uh, phi here here phi of x is a piece wise constant function okay piece wise constant means it is uh, something like this u minus we will write it for x negative okay and u plus we will write it for x positive so basically from left if you are looking at it i uh, will call it a u minus and uh, from right we will call it a u plus this is some constant u minus u plus this is nothing to do with if you guys know what u minus u plus uh, there is another notation right that if u is a function u plus u minus here uh, we are not assuming something like this so u plus u minus is a maximum minima that sort of thing it's not that uh, u plus u minus is some number okay some number yeah so u minus is from left so x is negative u minus x positive we are just assuming u plus clear no information on x equals to 0 is given okay and um, so this is a uh, phi and what is f so f here also f is uniformly very important okay f is uniformly convex clear f is uniformly convex that is okay what does it means it means that there exist okay a theta greater than 0 such that okay very important please um, understand you guys know all about convexity right if f is convex so let's say uh, if f is a c2 function or maybe c infinity huh? let's just stuck with c it's infinity f is a c infinity function which is convex which is convex now we all know that if that is the case f double prime has to be greater than 0 right that is convexity so f double prime can be greater than 0 means i mean f double prime for some sequence xn it can happen that f double prime of xn can converge to 0 it can happen right i mean it can be as closer to 0 as possible but if it is uniformly convex it means that for there exists some theta positive okay such that f is bounded by that theta so f double prime sorry f double prime is surrounded by this theta such that f double prime is greater than or equal to theta greater than equal to 0 so basically it is bounded below by that theta so it cannot uh, i mean you know arbitrarily go towards zero clear yeah? okay so this case cannot happen this is uniformly convex uh, sorry this is convex if if f is convex f double prime is positive that you guys already know here it is called a, we are saying more we need uniform convexity uniform convexity is it is bounded by a positive number however small it might be clear yeah? okay now um, i mean just for uh, fun le- i mean you guys can obviously try and find out a uniformly convex so uh, i mean this uh, the uh, example of this thing 
i will not give it to you you guys have to find it yourself okay so um, uh, so this is for a, a small exercise for you guys exercise find f from r to r of course it will also be in the assignment but anyways let's just put it as an exercise here f from r to r uh, which is uniformly convex okay of course we need you do realize that whenever we are saying uniformly convex we are assuming that f double prime exists right so basically of course assuming assuming f is smooth f is at least c2 or c infinity i mean uh, here it is not a very i mean precise thing you can take c infinity you can take c2 but for, i mean c2 is fine enough you don't, don't worry about it okay so uh, let me write it down so this problem one okay the problem one so basically the equation this equation along with this uh, data where the data is this is a piecewise constant data okay we call it a piecewise constant piecewise constant data we took we have looked at two different problems right with piecewise constant data so if the data is piecewise constant and f is given to be uniformly convex in that case one is called the riemann problem is it fine is called the riemann problem okay this is after the great german mathematician i am absolutely certain that all of you have got, all of you guys have heard about bernard riemann right so this is after him riemann problem okay so that guy has contribution in everything it looks like yes from geometry to uh, integration to everything right okay so this is that riemann okay so let's look at the problem uh, in a more you know precise way so essentially we are writing down a theorem so this is a theorem by the way you see oh, the whole of whatever we did up till here the solve the second order equations which we have studied heat equation wave equation and uh, laplace equation and now this uh, conservation laws which you are studying i am doing all of that from ivans okay it's just some uh, precise explanation ivans uh, book is not a very easy book to uh, i mean you know follow by yourself if you are doing it for yourself uh, for the first time so this is just an explanation for my explanation how i understand ivans and that i just i'm just writing that down okay so the theorems are exactly like ivans okay so let me write it down so uh, i mean of course when so in again in this video whenever we are talking about phi and whenever we are talking about f these assumptions are uh, you know assumed okay these are assumed on phi and f is assumed write that until we say otherwise okay so so uh, okay uh, so given phi and f phi and f of course f is given to be uniformly convex if you remember okay given phi and x there exist a unique very important one unique this means unique unique weak solution okay unique weak solution so basically uh, you have two part of the you know well posedness unique weak uh, so unique weak admissible solution okay you guys already know what is admissible solution what is admissible solution so basically the ranking hugenide condition is satisfied along with the entropy condition right uh, solution to one to the riemann problem okay to the riemann problem one to one so basically let me write it as one clear okay so number one so essentially uh, what do we have if u minus so the wave on the left okay is greater than u plus so the initial condition not uh, here wave. so basically it is the height of the wave at t equals to zero okay so if that if that is greater than the, if i mean you know the, the, the height is more than the uh, wave on the right okay then the admissible solution admissible solution okay uh, has a shock curve you remember the term x equals to zit okay has a shock curve uh, of speed sigma okay of speed sigma you remember speed which is a prime of uh, xi prime of t right and the solution is given by solution is given by okay so it is basically say telling you what is the solution u of xt is going to be u plus u minus sorry u minus this is for x 
less than t sigma clear okay and u plus which is x greater than t times sigma okay now don't get confused here uh, i am just writing down what we have learned in the uh, i mean you know we looked at two different uh, ex ex examples right in the other video so uh, wh whatever we have learned from that i am just uh, i mean we are taking intuition from there and we are writing down the theorem we will of course prove this thing here yeah? so basically what it is saying is for x less than t s less than t sigma so in our earlier case if you remember sigma for f is u square by 2 sigma was half right so at that case u is u minus for x less than t by 2 and u plus for x greater than t by 2 you can just compare it with your other example okay and number two if u minus the wave on the left is the speed is less than that u plus on the right then the solution then you remember what happened there was a gap right that rear fraction gap then the solution has a rear fraction wave rear fraction wave i hope you remember this one yes uh, this was uh, that uh, you know the gap was there in that uh, i mean xt plane where we can could not find a solution right okay so that is the rear fraction wave and the solution is given by if you remember how we did the solution so uh, we can write it with the shock wave also but uh, i mean that was giving us the wrong entropy condition okay so the right entropy condition is given by the, so the solution which satisfy the right entropy condition is given by if you remember uh, that was given by some x by t right so here we will write it in a more general way x t will be given as u minus clear for x less than f of u minus f prime of u minus times t okay g capital g i will write it down what capital g is so in our earlier case the earlier example which we just did okay uh, just did means in the other video the first second second example in that case g of xt was actually x by t okay so uh, that was because of our initial condition okay so don't worry about uh, i mean uh, that is just for our initial condition this is just a general version of that okay so u minus less than x by t less than a prime u plus okay i hope this is fine and u plus when x by t is greater than f prime of u plus here so what is g here here where capital g is f prime the inverse of that okay the inverse of that the inverse of f prime okay fine now one question this is i want you to ask huh? i will not be answering it right now okay what i want you to do is this so this is a question for you guys think about it why do you think that the inverse of a prime exists okay uh, we certainly did not start with f is bijective on everything right f prime is bijective and all we did not start so why does the inverse exist that is one question which i am leaving it for you guys uh, to think about okay so let's prove this theorem and then we'll go uh, from there okay so proof so first thing first to prove uh, now of course you see uh, the first one the first problem huh? uh, see the, the, this thing this this problem number one huh? see u u is given by u minus for x by t less than t and u plus for x by t greater than t okay so uh, do you think it is a uh, uh, i mean classical uh, i mean you see uh, I mean, in either side of the curve, I mean, the, you know, there is a curve x equals to sigma t. On either side of the curve, this is going to be what sort of thing? This is going to be a classical solution, right? On either side of the curve, 
okay uh, if you remember so you see uh, because it is a constant function right it's a constant function it satisfies the i mean it satisfies the equation there is nothing to prove there right i mean you can just put it there, there and it's, it's constant so there is nothing you whenever you do ut and you know you calculate ut and if you calculate ux it's, it's going to be zero so you don't worry about all that it is definitely going to uh, satisfy the equation that's not a problem and anyways they are uh, classical i mean they are uh, smooth in either side of the guard x equals to sigma t right and that will actually guarantee that uh, you have a you know it's a weak solution yeah why it will guarantee because uh, i mean it will satisfy the rankin fibonacci jump condition also okay because it is given like this you see it is given like this i mean yeah because this sigma is uh, i mean a prime of t this def this the, the whole uh, you know how do i put it uh, you see uh, the whole solution is constructed thinking of all of that condition in mind so uh, definitely this is going to see sigma is what sigma is f prime of uh, sorry not f prime sigma prime eh? sorry xi prime xi prime eh? xi prime of t if you remember okay that's the speed right okay so you see what is happening here is this i mean the whole uh, if you i mean think about it uh this whole uh, solution is set up in such a way that it has to satisfy the rankin huguenot condition this is the rankin huguenot condition right i mean if you want you can just uh, uh, write it down f of u plus plus f of u minus by u plus by u minus that is a prime of t okay so all of that is already satisfied so this is going to be a weak solution there is nothing to prove here okay and of course um, yeah so and uh, why it satisfy the entropy condition because u minus is greater than u plus it is given here the entropy condition is given here okay so it will satisfy the entropy condition uh, so i mean uh, what i am trying to say is this i am going to skip the first problem uh, it is not a very difficult thing to see and i am quite sure you guys can understand that okay this this uh, condition why we need it this is just to guarantee the entropy condition and this uh, i mean after that whatever the solution is that is uh, you know that is actually constructed keeping the curve of discontinuity in mind so that the rankin huguenot condition is satisfied i uh, i hope this is fine okay okay now let's look at the second problem that is important okay second problem is important that and let me prove that part okay so the second let, let let me write it down huh? it will be better u of xt so i want to show this is our weak solution okay this is our weak solution u minus for x by t less than a prime u minus g capital g of x by t okay this is for f prime of u minus less than x by t less than f prime of u plus okay and u plus for x by t greater than f prime of u plus okay g is of course if you remember we write wrote it as f prime the inverse of that okay where right now what we are going to do is basically we need to check that uh, i mean uh, you see uh, first thing first let's say i mean if if you draw this x y t kind of thing okay let's say i'm drawing x t and let's say this is our uh, curve okay x equals to sigma t okay and uh, i mean we did this sort of thing so basically you know sorry let me let me draw it like this okay let me draw it like this see mm, for x less than so let's say this is the this is the part okay this is the place where it is uh, u is g by x by t okay so u equals to g of x by t in this case so u is u plus here and u equals to u minus here okay i'm just drawing something randomly yeah? this is nothing i mean it's not like a precise thing something in this uh, let's say that is your um, x y t equals to f of f prime of u uh, f prime of u minus okay and this is f prime of u plus x y t equals to f prime of u plus okay so uh, i mean uh, of course uh, i'm just uh, you know arbitrarily just drawing some stuff and here you see in this part of the domain in this part of the domain u equals to u minus so that's a classical solution in this part again u equals to u plus in this part of the domain okay so that's a classical solution so we are only interested in finding out if this is uh, valid or not okay so basically mm, uh, we are looking at the left of this this particular thing and on the right of this thing so this region r let's call it r 
okay so we need to check i hope this is fine huh? u is a solution in this place a prime u minus less than x by t less than a prime u plus because the other two parts they are classical okay now let's just do that so how do you check it it is i if it is classical solution this has to satisfy ut plus f of ux right so what is it it is the first thing first we have to use chain rule here so ut u is g by x by t so it is g prime of x by t and then the derivative of t so which is minus x by t square chain rule clear plus the derivative of this thing this is a prime of ux okay so ux is g of x by t clear g of x by t times ux right a prime of u a prime of u times ux okay see f of u the derivative of that is a prime of u times ux right okay so i'm just writing it down so a prime of u is g by x by 2 and then ux is g prime of x by t and the derivative of x by t which is 1 by t okay derivative of x i mean x by t with respect to derivative with respect to x that is 1 by t I, I hope this is clear okay so now you see what is happening here let, let us write it down it is g prime of x by t minus x by t square okay and what you see what is g g is f prime inverse clear so a prime of a prime inverse x by t okay so that is one so it is essentially i am left out with g prime of x by t times x by t square okay so x by t from here it is coming and 1 by t from here it is coming so essentially x by t square yeah, i hope this is fine okay so uh, yeah now what do we have okay what do we have so this is basically the same here so this is zero clear okay therefore therefore u is classical in all the three classical in, in each of the three regions right each of the three regions in each of the three regions how huh? it is defined okay now so also okay along the curve along the curve x by t equals to a prime u minus this curve this curve a prime u minus okay g of x by t clear this is a prime inverse of x by t okay that is given by u minus clear see x by t equals to f in a prime a u minus so a prime inverse of x by t is u minus on that curve okay along that curve uh, this 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 curve this curve huh? this curve okay now along this curve now we just uh, i mean you can do the exact same thing yeah, yeah you can do the exact same thing along this curve you can show that g by x t is u plus clear okay therefore u has no curve of discontinuity so u is continuous right no curves of discontinuity continuity okay and thus satisfy the entropy condition okay and that satisfies the entropy condition okay so and now um, so yeah so it is done so it satisfies the entropy condition uh, there is no uh, i mean uh, and it is uh, classical in each of the regions are so i mean there is nothing else to do it is going to be a uh, weak solution okay hence you therefore I, I mean i don't have to write it so hence it is a weak solution and and we're done okay so maybe i can end it here okay the theorem yeah i i hope this is clear nothing to do here actually you see the point of all of this is the solutions here in both the cases were constructed in such a way 
that you know uh, how do i put it that uh, you know whatever we want the solution does you know the solution we are actually manipulating the solution that's the point you do understand so that is why it is bound to satisfy huh? we have manipulated the solution and here also we did the exact same thing it's just a little complicated here because of the capital g otherwise there is nothing else to do okay so it is a i mean the rare faction the solution is a rare faction wave in that case okay of course it is the admissible solution okay it is the admissible solution so now we are done okay so you see we are done here okay so let, let's uh, finish the proof here okay and uh, let's look at one uh, another example and then we are going to uh, finish this lecture I, I think this lecture this uh, example will make things more precise okay that will be better so uh, this is example three i guess of this conservation law so you have this problem ut plus u a v x equals to zero Okay, u at the point x zero is phi of x. Phi of x. Okay, this is for x in R and t positive. And what is phi? Where phi of x is given to be one for x between zero and one and zero otherwise. Okay, now. Of course, uh, we already know. So this is a Burger situation. Huh? We have solved it many times. We already know what are the characteristics of. So the the projected characteristics. I am not proving this thing. Yeah? The projected characteristics curves are given by. So of again, let me explain to you. In this course, we had taken something for always. You know that. Uh, as far as uh, i mean i mean in my control i have always uh, used consistent notation so you see uh, whenever we write r here um, if i am parameterizing a curve c with r that is always the parameterization of the data curve clear that is always the parameterization of the data curve so in this case that data curve will be given by r zero phi of r right r is in r Okay, and uh, the characteristic curves, the characteristic curves is parameterized by. So let's say the characteristic curves is given by, um, uh, I don't know, maybe some some p, huh? but that is always parameterized by s. Yeah, the characteristic curves are always parameterized by s. So here the characteristic projected characteristics are given by x of r t is equals to p of r t. Plus R, okay. And where is this R varying? R is varying in R. Clear? X and T is given to you, and um, this is the other projected characteristics. Clear? So now let's look at the cases. So case one, if R is negative, okay, then what is phi of R? Phi of R, R negative, it is going to be zero, right? It is going to be zero. Which implies x is equals to phi of r is zero. X is equals to r. Okay. And what is u along the, these curves? If you remember, you see, uh, if you remember the characteristic thing, this z prime of r s. Okay. Z prime of r s. This prime is with respect to s. This is equals to zero, right? Okay. So u is constant along these curves, right? And since um, phi of r is going to be zero okay so u is equals to zero along x equals to r i hope this is clear z is constant so what is z z is defined by if you remember z of r s is given by u of x r s y r s right that is how we define z now you see z is constant along s for a fixed r z is constant this is one of the characteristic equation right Z is constant along S. At S equals to zero, P of R. So at I mean when S equals to zero, you, in the starting P of R is given to be zero, right? So Z is constant along the characteristic curves, and at the origin S equals to zero, it is zero. So basically Z is zero, and hence U is zero along these curves. X equals to P. I hope this is clear. Okay. Now, if zero R lies between zero and one, then what happens? Then P of R is going to be you see one okay phi of r is one okay and that will imply 
x equals to p of r is 1 so this is t plus r clear and what is u in this case p of r is 1 so initially if you, u is phi right at s equals to 0 u is phi so z is phi basically z is u so base, hence u is going to be 1 along this characteristic along this curves along x equals to t plus r this is fine okay u is constant remember what it does at x equals to 0 chaos forward along the characteristics at x equals to 0 phi of r is going to be 1 so z is going to be 1 so u is going to be 1 clear now if r is greater than 1 okay then what is r greater than 1 0 otherwise okay so phi of r is again going to be 0 and that will imply x equals to r the first case huh? and u is equals to 0 along along this curves okay x equals to Okay, so when R, so essentially what all of this means is when R lies between 0 and 1, okay, X is T plus R, when R lies between, uh, I mean less than 0 or greater than 1, X equals to R are the projected characteristics, clear, okay. So now let us just draw the, you know, uh, the char projected characteristic curves and for that, uh, let's just draw it here, right. This is your X, this is your T and uh, x negative c uh, so basically this is r is varying in this line right x x x is so when r is negative x is equals to r so essentially it will look like this no the projected characteristic comes it will look like this x equals to r okay and uh, let's say this is your x equals to 1 1 so uh, for x greater than 1 you have this projected characteristics which is uh, u equals to 0 so essentially x equals to r here of itself so x equals to r okay now and uh, r is between 0 and 1 you have uh, x equals to t plus r okay so in between r 0 and 1 x equals to t plus 1 so those are uh, slow lines with slope 1 okay so these are the projected characteristics now as you can see that there is a shock where is the shock when this line x equals to t plus r that you know for any r for r between 0 and 1 so basically let me write it down so essentially mm, we have we have shock okay we have shock we have shock uh, when the lines x equals to t plus r for r between 0 1 and x equals to 1 intercepts clear why shock because suddenly you see you will have for every point here wherever they are intersecting so they are intersecting everywhere right I mean from uh, from on this line x equals to 1 every point on this line uh, is getting intersected uh, so uh, if you find if you want to find the value of u there what is going to happen that will be a multivariate function because along this characteristic that is going to be 1 and along this characteristic this is going to be 0 right so these are the this is kind of a shock uh, curve you can say okay there is a shocking here okay and there is a rearfection wave also and where is the rearfection wave? See this this part rearfection. Why? Because as you can see, you remember the earlier thing. Here we do not have any uh, much information. Okay. So here we have a blank thing. So this is and uh, there is a rearfection wave there. We get a rearfection wave. Rearfection wave. Wave. Okay. Uh, where the rearfection wave between x equals to zero between x equals to 0 and x equals to t 
clear this is x equals to t line that line this line uh, i hope this is fine x equals to t line okay so uh, x equals to t and x equals to 0 so we, between the, this whole thing there is a rarefaction wave uh, situation going on okay of course this is also intersects somewhere at x equals to uh, t equals to t less than equal 1 no? t less than equal up till t less than equal 1 there is no problem after that it intersects okay so you have to deal with all of that uh, you know all of these uh, issues huh? so let's do that so the first thing first let's just uh, i mean think of a shock curve okay which is since it is emanating from x equals to one the shock curve okay let's just think of there is some shock curve okay uh, so basically uh, let me let me again draw some pictures here i hope uh, i mean this will be enough to convince you uh, this is x equals to one x axis d axis Okay. and uh, the shock curve starts from here somewhere okay so here it starts from somewhere i mean sorry uh, so let's just draw it like this huh? i am not quite sure what that looks like right now okay let let us just do that and then we'll see what it looks like okay so you see uh, uh, of course there are projected characteristics in this part right when those projected characteristics uh, what is u u in this case is u equals to zero if you remember u equals to zero here okay u is 0 and u is 1 uh, sorry u is 0 in this side also okay if you remember see see u is 0 along x equals to r u is 0 along x equals to r for this so in this parts where they are not touching anywhere so u is 0 that's not a problem here here also there is no problem u equals to 0 so essentially you see if you just look at this particular graph uh, i mean the, you know this uh, diagram uh, essentially if you if you just draw it like this let 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 me again draw another part see uh, i mean x equals to 1 this curves are there and x equals to uh, t plus r they intersect here okay and uh, this up till this part they also intersect here right so these are these are the characteristics these are the characteristics see mm. that's the intersection in this part u is of course zero u is of course zero here huh? you don't worry about it so essentially you see in this part also this parts u is zero this part u is zero okay my issue here is only in this region let me let me uh, my issue here is only in this region this region what happens here do you understand okay because the curves uh, projected characteristic curves intersect here there is no intersection you see here means this this part this parts huh? uh, i mean here there are no intersections this, this all of these areas okay so this area is given by this this is this is the same area okay so here there are no intersections so u equals to zero here u equals to zero here. that was given to us i don't know what is happening in this area that is the point which i want to look at okay of course if there is a, a shock curve that starts from x equals to one right so and what is the speed of the shock curve that we need to uh, find out so how do you find out the speed of the uh, shock curve for that we want to use the rankine huguenite uh, condition right so by um, rankine huguenite condition rankine huguenite condition again as i told you rh condition whenever i am writing it means rankine huguenite condition okay i uh, i hope i have explained to you earlier also okay whenever we am writing rh condition okay i did not explain i mean maybe i explained it in the earlier video so you see there are some things which are we are always going to use in this course whenever i am writing this small fee most of the times if it is not mentioned we think of this fee as some function a particular function okay which will be given to us so in the our case this small fee is you see this small fee is the data curve initial data curve small fee okay if this fee anywhere in the assignments also if it is written like this if it is written like this, huh? this is the capital fee. Capital fee. Okay. So you see, if it is written like this, capital fee of X, let's say. Yeah. Then you guys already know that that is the fundamental solution, right? Of what? Fundamental solution of Laplace equation. Okay. Solution of Laplace. Of Laplace equation. Again, you also know that if it is written like this, capital fee of XT. If it is written like this, it is the fundamental solution of heat equation. Okay. 
so do not get confused well. whenever i am using capital fee in this course always it will mean fundamental solution until unless it is explicitly mentioned what is capital fee capital fee is always fundamental solution small fee is always uh, your you know some arbitrary function yeah okay now again and also rh condition if i'm writing rh condition you can also use this in your examinations if you want you you write only rh condition it means rankin huguenot condition you don't have to write the whole rankin huguenot condition okay just write rh condition okay uh, so the rh condition what does it give it gives the speed of the curve sigma so i want to draw some curve this this curve i want to find what this curve is so sigma is the jump of f of u by jump of u okay and f of u here is c in this case this is a burgers equation right so f of u is u square by 2 yeah, it is written here f of u is u square by 2 right so you see here it will be given by u minus plus u plus by 2 if you just break it up it is going to be this right okay now uh, let's see what happens see on the other side u is going to be zero here it is always u plus is always going to be zero okay so i don't know what is u minus but u minus also here from here you can see that uh, i mean if, if this has to satisfy in these areas in these areas in these areas u minus is going to be 1 right right i mean because of the initial condition you see initially it is getting carried out like 1 okay up till x equals to 1 it is getting carried out so i i am starting out with the um, um, data curve such that I want u to be 0 on the other side, this side u equals to 0 and on that side u equals to 1 because just to you know match the initial conditions okay. So I want u, so u minus is 1, u plus is 0 and by 2. So this is half. So the speed of the curve has to be half. So therefore the, uh, the shock curve okay, um, how do I put it, the shock curve, huh? shock curve so basically our curve x equals to xi t if you remember shock curve is given by here it is not x it is x minus 1 because it starts from 1 right so it means x minus 1 equals to uh, half t sigma t right that that's the shock curve if you remember sigma is the slope of that okay so essentially what is happening the slope is half fixed huh? so essentially what is happening is this shock curve will look something like this clear i hope this is fine maybe i can one second let me ah uh, okay let me just draw it properly okay see the shock curve from here this is x equals to one this is the x axis it starts from here it goes on like this so this is x minus 1 equals to t by 2 that's the shock curve okay why it is like this because you see uh, it starts from x equals to 1 yeah so that is why it looks like this so x equals to 1 and in this whole region in this region u plus is going to be 0 clear yeah? okay now i don't know what is u uh, so i have to find what is u in these parts right okay so this is a shock curve i know u plus is going to be zero here what is u minus here i know that u minus here you see since there is an initial condition given here uh, what is the value of uh, u here it is one right and it is getting carried forward so on one side of the shock curve you can write it as zero and the other side of the shock curve you can write it as u equals to one i hope this is fine why because of the initial condition okay but is it always one no it is not always one it is one up till x equals to t x equals to t so this line is x equals to t okay so in this part it is one is this clear see uh, i mean we have to worry about this part this part in this 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 part u is one because of the initial condition i'm taking it to be like this and on the other side of the shock curve and i'm extending it okay i'm extending it up till here so u is one up till in this area here u is zero here u is zero in this part u is zero okay so uh, because on the other side of the shock curve you want u plus to be zero u minus to be one so u is one in this part is it one here no okay because there there's a rare faction wave going on 
you see here there is a rarefaction wave going on okay so i don't know what is there um, uh, there so the, for that i have to worry about the rarefaction thing now you guys already know that uh, if you have a rarefaction thing it is g of x by t where uh, g is a f prime inverse right and in our case when f is u square by 2 you guys already know that what is it this is given by u equals to x by t right so in this area this area let me draw it like this this area u is given by x by t i hope this is fine u is x by t you remember last uh, this thing uh, ex exercise also we did this yes in the last exercise we did this thing huh? so um, again uh, let me just write it down that uh, of course of course uh, i don't know oh, okay of course okay u uh, is equals to x by t in the region in the region which region uh, x equals to 0 and x equals to t clear so in that region uh, after t equals to 1 of course huh? after t equals to 1 this is going to be uh, i mean uh, u equals to x by t that is always there okay now because you see the, the, i mean now my sh new shock curve is this huh? i mean uh, here it was intersecting there was a problem so we constructed a new shock curve along which one side is zero and one side is one okay now this this particular x equals to t that intersects somewhere right this x minus t equals to t so see at t equals to zero now at t equals to two okay x minus one equals to t by two and x equals to t intercepts okay so again same problem will happen you do understand again if if they intersect again the same problem will happen okay so and now i i, I hope this is fine what i'm trying to say see i, I mean if you now so if, if you are defining u to be one zero in this area this area whole u is zero clear u equals to x by t in this this wedge x equals to 0 and x equals to t this, between x equals to 0 line and x equals to t line uh, i am taking u to be x by t this is the rare fraction thing that is why i am just doing it like this huh? u equals to 0 uh, on this area you know that uh, i mean x minus t greater than t by 2 that area okay this this area this area okay now this area equals to 1 because of the initial conditions are dictating that right okay u equals to 1 between you know x equals to t uh, and x equals to t plus x equals to uh, x minus 1 equals to t by 2 okay between this area uh, u is equals to 1 that we have but what is happening here is this see if you move forward in this point t equals to 2 let's say this is t equals to 2 okay x minus 1 mi equals to t by 2 and x equals to t these two again intersects okay when it intersects what is happening is this you see uh, along the I mean, uh, you know, there is another, uh, you know, the rarefaction. So basically, this is the rarefaction wave, right? Here, these waves are rarefaction waves. Huh? This rarefaction wave, they actually hit the shock wave. This is the shock wave, right? X equals to C. Let me use a different color. I think that will be better. Huh? You see, this is the, this is the shock wave. This is the shock wave okay and this is the rarefaction wave x equals to see this is the rarefaction wave x equals to t right x, x, x by u equals to x by t here on the rarefaction wave so basically they two they get intersects here right now whenever they are intersecting then also we have another issue right how do you deal with that issue that's the question which we need to uh, answer in this part okay so let's just do that i hope this is fine uh, again see i am explaining it to you it may not be 100 percent clear to you what i want you to do is you take your pen and pencil sit down with this exact example okay and try to you know write everything down think about what is happening okay so please do that i mean i can do my best to uh, teach you but the thing is until unless you do it yourself you won't understand what exactly is the problem okay so here what is happening is at this point the rear fraction wave and the shock waves intercepts okay and now what happens is so we need this jump 
now uh, there uh, i have to have another you know card something from here which will actually you know has to satisfy the rankin huginite condition for our solution to exist because uh, from there this point onwards the solution again does not exist okay so what happens now intersects and we have a problem and we have a problem problem right so basically the rear fraction wave and the shock wave intersects so maybe i can put it like this the rear fraction wave and shock wave intersects clear okay okay now i have to do all of this all over again so what we have to do is now again you see mm, so from this point from this point okay i have to draw another curve okay such that u minus is x by t because you see u u is x by t in this part okay and u is zero on this part okay so i have to draw another curve so basically uh, by ranking you can write condition so i i will start with another curve which starts from this point you understand what i am trying to say since it intersects here i will start with another um, curve okay so what i am trying to do here is this and the point is given me by 2 by 2 2 2 t equals to 2 x equals to 2 this point okay so um, so by ranking huguenot condition again ranking huguenot condition okay what is the sigma here that is jump of f of u by jump of u okay which is given by u minus plus u plus by 2 okay what is u minus u minus here it is given by x by t okay and what is u plus it is zero so this is x by 2t clear i hope this is clear okay therefore you have a new shock curve okay so therefore we have a new shock curve i know this is a little you know intimidating but the first if you do it for the first time but uh, i mean you just take some time i mean give yourself some time think about what is exactly happening okay this is not very difficult thing to understand we have a new shock curve okay this is emanating so basically we are you know manipulating solutions that's all we are doing from the point 2 2 is this clear okay so let me draw the uh, i mean the new okay uh so you see in this part of course u is going to be zero if you remember u is going to be zero in this part okay see u is zero in this part okay and uh, so let's say this is 2 this is 2 2 okay and uh, x equals to 2 here x equals to 1 here okay oh right now x equals to 1 so x equals to t line goes like this let's say huh? yeah it does not look like x equals to t but let's just hope this is x equals to t okay that's x equals to t and this line actually x minus 1 equals to t by 2 that intersects somewhere at 2 2 right so this line is x equals to this line is x equals to uh, what is it uh, 1 plus t by 2 right right clear okay now here u is zero yes here u is zero clear here u is x by t here u is 1 okay but from here there is a intersection at 2 2 what do we do now so to uh, you know get okay so both the lines are gone let me just draw another one Okay, I hope this is fine. Okay, uh, so x equals to t line. This one x equals to t. Let me write it like this: x equals to t, and this line is x equals to t by two plus one. Clear? Okay. Now this intersects at two two. So from here there is a new curve emanating from here. Okay. So let's just assume some some curve. Okay, some curve emanating from here. What is the curve? This uh, the slope of that curve is given by x by t. So um, therefore, therefore, uh, since the speed the speed is given by x by two t, x by two t, right? Therefore, the curve is 
the curve is given by given by x t x as a function of t is root 2 t clear i mean just you just put it in the problem and you can get it yeah? it's not a very difficult thing to see okay i, I hope this is fine yeah? i'm not calculating all that i'm just writing it down okay so the now the new curve from here it starts from 2 2 okay it starts from 2 2 that curve it starts from here and it's so basically some parabolic kind of thing that will go on up i mean that that will be our new shock curve this will be our new shock curve okay now so what is the solution let's try just write down the solution okay so this is a little complicated now uh, let me write down the solution okay so the weak solution so there are two shock curves huh? the weak solution are given by given by u of x t is the first one if you remember 0 for x negative x by t when 0 x lies between x equals to 0 and x equals to t x by t right it is 1 1 where here you see uh, where is it yeah 1 in this wedge this, this part this part okay so basically between x bit uh, x is between t and t by 2 plus 1 right and it is 0 when x is greater than 1 plus t by 2 i hope this is x actually fine okay this is this is this holds for t less than equal to right because up till t equals to 2 this is true t equals to 2 up till t equals to 2 this is true right after t equals to 2 you have a new shock curve okay so and for t greater than equal to okay what do we have u of x t is given by 0 okay if x equal is x negative of course if, if x negative i mean x negative will be 0 you don't have to worry about it again if x x lies with here so x is greater than equal root 2 t in this part okay see i mean think of this as in this part if x is greater than root 2t this is x equals to x equals to root 2t right that line uh, that curve so x greater than 2 root 2t it is going to be 0 because u equals to 0 in this part it's that's not a problem right okay and u is x y t in this part clear okay so u is x y t if 0 less than x less than root 2t and it is again 0 if uh, x is greater than root 2t okay. i hope this is clear to you okay this is the weak solution which we get of course this is a weak solution because uh, i mean does it uh, the, the the rank in Hibernate condition well, of course it holds because you see we have manipulated our uh, solution like that itself okay because we have derived it using those things so that will hold okay and of course you guys can check that this is also going to uh, you know the entropy condition is going to be satisfied right so um, uh, this uh, particular uh, solution is a admissible weak solution okay hence u is a admissible weak solution weak solution okay so if you are not convinced please check it yourself okay but uh, i mean uh, uh, this is a admissible weak solution uh, which we have obtained okay uh, so with this we are going to end this uh, video